word is our customer stand for the reading of the word. You can't find Joshua, find Judges or Ruth. You turn back to your left, you're running right into Joshua. It's a very familiar passage I've preached from here before, but I want you to see it from a different perspective on today. If you in Joshua chapter 1 say, I have his word. Do me a favor, scroll down to verse number 6, and this is where I'm going to pick up. In the book of Joshua, the first chapter in verse number 6. It says, I'm sorry, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. It says, be strong and of good courage. For unto this people thou have divided for an inheritance the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very, come on class, courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law or the instructions which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand, that thou mayest prosper, watch this now, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Just somebody tell say, you will prosper if you obey Watch this. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein, day, come on class, and, and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Watch this now. Don't miss this. For then, come on, say for then. For then, after you observe to do according to all, for then, thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. I want to talk from the, the thought on this morning when destiny is tied to a decision. When destiny is tied to a decision. Let's pray. Father our God, we thank you even now for this set time. Father, it is our sincere prayer that you would bless our time together. Spirit of God, in Jesus' name, I pray that you will open up the ears of the hearer. That you may touch their ears and open up their ears that, and I plant the seed of the word of God. Their, 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 their spirit may might receive the seed. And that the seed might yield fruit, fruity increase in their lives. I bless you for it. And in advance in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. When destiny is tied to a decision. This morning I want to get back into our series. Which I want to... Uh, Entitled, uh, entitled Life Lessons. That's going to be the uh, title for this, these series of lessons that we are in right now, Life Lessons. Come on, class, say Life Lessons. Life lessons. Now, last week we discovered uh, on last week that you can learn a lot from a dummy. Just tell the person by and say, get the CD, get the CD. If you missed last week, you missed a powerful word on last week, but we learned on last week that you can learn a lot from a dummy. And I want to get right back into our, our series of lessons because this week I want to have you understand that divine destiny does not happen automatically. Hear me class, divine destiny does not happen automatically. One of the things we have this proclivity to think that when God makes us a promise, that the promises of God, yes, they are yes and amen, but that some kind of way God is just going to allow things to happen. Right, right. But listen, when God has caused divine destiny to come upon your life, it does not happen automatically. As a matter of fact, I will go one step further. Listen, God can give you a divine destiny for your life, and you can refuse the plan of God for your life. Right, right. Pastor, what are you trying to say? If you recall, when the angel came to Mary and said, Mary, God is going to give you a child. And, 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 and Mary, said, what's this? Mary said, how can this thing be? See, I know not a man. Right, it was right. at that juncture that Mary could have told Jesus, I'm sorry, told the angel, I don't want to have this child because I am more concerned about what Joseph is going to think and about what people around us are going to think rather than birth the Messiah. And so it was at that juncture, listen, Mary had a chance to 
I'm out of her destiny. But watch this. Mary made a decision that my destiny and God's plan for my life is more important than what people think. Oh, I encourage the person by the time to say, your destiny and God's plan is more important than what people think. And Mary made a declaration. She said to this, she said, be it unto me according to thy word. What she was simply declaring you all is this, and don't miss this. She was simply saying this, that destiny will be tied to my decision. Understand, family, in, in, uh, uh, in life, there is this thing called cause and effect. Come on, class, say cause, effect. Come on, class, say cause, effect. In life, and whenever you do, never forget this, that everything in life, there is this thing called cause and effect. If you do one thing, something will happen as a result of the decisions that you and I make. Now, back in the day, back in the, uh, the early 40s and the 50s, maybe, one of the things many of us uh, uh, as a people often declare that another race of people was often keeping us down. Right. And I understand that worked back in the 50s, 60s, right. and 70s, right. and a little over into the 80s. But yeah. just the person by says, say, that boat won't float now. Yeah. Many people whose lives are struggling and full of and full of damnation and degradation is not because someone is keeping them down, but it's because of decisions they have made in their lives. Many folks are, listen, are miserable in their marriages because they made a bad decision with the person they married. Many folks uh, are in bad job situations because they took the job, not because the job was their calling for in life, but because of the money and benefits. And now you want a job that pays you pretty good money, and the job gives you pretty decent benefits, but you hate going to work. All right, all right. I would rather go to a job that I love to go to, yeah. and listen, maybe the money and the benefits are not all there, but watch this now. If I love the job where I am working on at the present time, I will give them more than they ask for, and it is based on what I do. I can move up in position if I make a decision to serve the place where I am employed. Okay, Pastor, what are you saying? See, there's nothing wrong with being the man who does the french fries in the Golden Arches. Because everybody has to start someplace. So there's nothing with being the guy in the back on the french fry burner. But listen, your mindset should move beyond just doing french fries. Because watch this, you can be doing french fries one time, go and help the guy doing hamburgers, go and help the guy who's packaging the product, go and help the manager, ask the manager, what do you need me to do? And if the person who owns the place see your effort in trying to make sure his company runs sufficiently, what he will do is find another position for you and move you up on the chain. And your promotion, don't miss this now, your promotion will come as a result of a decision that you made. And there are many people you all who are successful now because they had the spirit of dictatorship and they was willing to go above and beyond the call of duty. Ask the person by say, are you willing to go above and beyond the call of duty? There are not many people you all who are willing to go above and beyond the call of duty. And one of the things you will notice that many folk, the reason on the job they're working right now, the reason they cannot be promoted is because when they see someone else slacking, then they slack because the person who they're working with is slacking as well. And they say, well, I'm not going to do my job in their job, but watch this, I guarantee you, if you can do your job with someone else's job, someone is noticing your productivity. Are you following me? Because listen, if I am a company owner, a business owner, the person, there are two folks I notice. It's the one who is slacking and the one who is going above and beyond. Understand, family, your destiny is tied to the decisions that you make with your life. The quality of life that you live tomorrow is based on what you do today. Pastor, I don't believe that. Well, let me show you Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7. It says, Be not deceived. 
God is not marked. Watch this now. For whatsoever a man soweth, come on class, that shall he also reap. Watch this now. Here's the principle. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not be weary in well doing. Watch this now. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now watch this. There are two errors we often use in the scripture. If when somebody asks for plum food, we tell them, well, God going to get you. And then we oftentimes use it when it comes to giving an offering. Well, if you give, God will bless you. But there is a principle here that goes far beyond this. The principle here is, if you make a decision, your future can be bright based on a decision you make today. Now your, your life can be messed up totally on a decision, watch this, you don't make for today. See, what's the family. Now, I know you want to jump in the shop right now. Don't worry. We'll get to that part. But watch this. There are many folks who, well, let me say it like this. Has anyone ever seen someone on the street and you, they look like they're way beyond retirement age? And they're still hustling cans, washing cars, pedaling in front of somebody's store. And you would think that by the time you turn 65, 75 years old, that your life should be secure. But there are some people who are still struggling after working 35 and 45 years. You would think that by now your life would be secure. But there are some folk who are still trying to struggle and trying to figure out what tomorrow is going to bring. But truth be told, the reason your today is messed up is because you did not plan for tomorrow. But how many of you all understand that tomorrow is coming whether you are here or not? Jesus teaches us you all a principle, he says, to consider the ants. And listen, if you want to learn something, a spiritual principle, look at nature. You can always tell when a, a, a bad storm is going to come, just look for birds. If you don't see any birds in your neighborhood, I guarantee you a storm is coming. If you don't see ants crawling on the ground, I guarantee you pretty soon a storm is coming. But one of the things I noticed about an ant the other day, I was outside barbecuing, and a piece of meat that I didn't see fall off my uh, 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 out of my plate fell to the ground. And I saw ants from everywhere come out of one little crack. You wouldn't think that those many ants can fit in one little crack. But here it is. I didn't see the food on the ground, but every one of them saw it. And everybody came and got a piece of that meat. And watch this now. made a circle. Went from out the hole to the food, back to the hole. Question, what were they doing? They were storing up food for tomorrow because they understood that in, in a few months, the winter months are coming, nobody's going to be outside barbecuing so they can't just find food. But if I find food today, put it up someplace when it's cold outside and I can't find no food, I've already stored up enough food for my tomorrow. And this is not taught in the church because many times, we want to come to church and get an emotional thrill, and no one tells us that tomorrow is coming. Do you know what, what made uh, many folks become afraid when Y2K was coming? When folks heard that the, that, that the internet was going to shut down, the plane might shut down, everything might shut down, and folks were being afraid. Watch this. Their biggest concern was this. How am I going to eat tomorrow? What's going to happen with my money tomorrow? And they were afraid and concerned because, watch this, they had not prepared for tomorrow. But watch this class, when you make the right decision today, no matter what happens tomorrow, if you are prepared today for tomorrow, then when tomorrow comes, if everybody around you is in lack and insufficiency, your life will still go on. And curse somebody and say, you better prepare for tomorrow. See, watch this. In the scripture, in the scripture, when the king had a dream, the Pharaoh had a dream, and, and Joseph came to interpret the dream, he said, for seven years, there'll be plenty, and for seven years, there will be famine. Now, for those years of plenty, Joseph took, told the king, and said, put all that food in barns, and the Bible said they built barns everywhere, and as much food and grain as they could store up, they put it away. Now, when all the lands around them were going through famine, watch this, Egypt became the most powerful country in, on the earth because, watch this, everybody who didn't put up for tomorrow had 
to come and buy from them. Are you following me? And they plan for tomorrow. So when the seven years of famine show up, they have enough. Family, listen. When you ask God for divine direction, God did promise. He said, I will supply all of your needs. Now, here's the challenge you all. I found out in Christendom. But most church folk get a little extra change. Oh, I ain't scripture right now. But most folk get a little extra change. We spend it on shoes, on jewelry, on clothes, on furniture, on hair. And watch this, we celebrate by showing everybody our new outfit. But then when your money is funny and your change gets strange again, you are now once again in the gimme line. But had you prepared for tomorrow properly, you ain't talking about me now. Because God, listen, God who is supernatural has given us a plan. He has put a plan in his word that will get all of us through tomorrow. But if you and I don't follow God's directive, follow the instructions of the, of the Most High God, when tomorrow shows up, watch this, we will think that God does not concern. It is not that God is not concerned. Watch this, we did not follow God's instructions. Act the person by and say, would you please follow God's instructions? I spent time, you all, know, reflecting on the lives of many of our great patriarchs in the Bible. And the common link, the common thread that pulled all of them together. Watch this now. The common thing that tied their failures and their successes was this. Watch this now. Was their awareness of God. And they allowed their destiny or their decisions to guide their all destiny. Right, right. Pastor, what are you saying? Watch this. When God told Noah, <coughs> said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. Oh, did Noah did not what's this? Noah was not a carpenter. God told Noah, said, Noah, it's gonna rain. Watch this family, it had, it had never rained. Now Noah could have done like many of us, well God, first of all, what's the boat? Number two, what's rain? He could have spent years debating with God about what God said was going to come to pass, and watch this never completed the assignment. But Tanya Noah adhered to what God said. God said, it's going to rain. Now, over the next 120 years, Noah had a chance to become depressed. Because you know, like I know, that everybody who saw Noah building this boat was talking about him. Look at that old man. 120 years, this old fool is still trying to build this boat. But with nobody laughing when the rain showed up. Everybody who was calling him an old fool was saying, Noah, let us in. But the Bible said, watch this, not Noah, but God shut the door. Which simply tells me this, that when God gives you a season, you have to be willing to flow in the season and the timing of God because when the door closes, that season is gone. Oh, I curse somebody and say, don't miss the season, don't miss the season. Look at Jesus. Jesus, y'all, made a decision. Watch this now. He made a decision to commit his life totally to God. You recall after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible said he was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And it was in the wilderness, you all, where he made a decision that devil, you going to trick the last Adam. You recall in Genesis, the first Adam got tricked and got messed up. The Bible said the serpent deceived Eve, which means she was fooled. He caught her on the wrong day at the wrong time and got our whole old mankind messed up. But Jesus, you all made a decision. You won't get me like you got Adam. And watch this now. Understand, a temptation is not a temptation unless what you've been tempted with is something you want. Y'all get that. See, there's some things you can tempt me with, and there's some things I don't care if you can give me a room full of it. If it's not what I want, then I'm, I'm not going after it. Why you follow me? When the, when the serpent came to tempt Jesus, when Satan came to tempt Jesus, everything he tempted him with was why he came. Why you follow me? 
But Jesus had already made a decision that my divine destiny will be locked to a decision I make. And so watch this. Every time the devil showed up, he said, get behind me. Yeah. And you follow me? He said, it is written. Because Jesus understood that my divine purpose and my divine destiny is tied to the decision I make today. Watch this. Even in the garden, when he knew it was time to die, and the Bible declared that he was sweat, sweating out blood or, or, or sweat like drops of blood. He said, Father, is there another way we, we can do this? Because watch this. In his natural, in his flesh, he did not want to die. But watch this. It was at that point he made a decision. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. And it was because of his decision, all of us in here, watch this now, have a destiny because of his decision. We have all been made righteous because of his decision. We can all be saved because of his decision. We, listen, we don't even have to fear death because of his decision. We can ever fear being broke because of his decision. Our destiny, our divine governing, have been brought to pass because of his decision. Somebody say his decision, his decision. We have to then move you all from this erroneous thinking that things are going to just fall in place and we relieve ourselves of no responsibility. I know we heard these great songs that said, step back and let God do it. But I promise you, if you step back and let God do it, you're going to die broke. You're going to die homeless. You're going to die sick. And watch this. Nothing in your life is going to resemble the promise of God for your life. You know why? Because watch this. When God sets up principle, when God sets up divine order, everything God sets up is tied, watch this now, to your participation. Oh, half the crowd going right there. I said everything God has designed for your life is set up along with your participation. God promised Abraham a seed. But Abraham had to participate. Y'all better keep me right there. Somebody say, you must participate. And one of the things you'll see, I understand it sounds real spiritual. Well, God's going to bless me with this. But if you don't do anything, I promise you it ain't coming. Watch this. God told Jonah to go and preach to Nineveh. God's divine plan was that, was that the, the, the city of Nineveh, all of them get saved. Jonah decided, I'm not going. And he made a decision, God, I don't want to do that because of what they did to my people. Well, God couldn't make him go, but God had a, had a plan to change the boy's mind. And one of the reasons many of us could be going through what we are right now is because God is saying go left and you went right. And God said, I can't change your mind, but what I can do is allow the enemy to put enough pressure on you that you will turn your heart right back to me to get to the place where I have called you to be. And many of us are walking right by our destiny is because we won't allow God to put us back in position. Or ask the person, I said, are you in the right place? And the reason many of us are not walking you all into our wealthy place, into our promised destiny, into the plan of God for our lives, Barbara, is because many God, of God's folks are out of position. Oh, listen, I can't wait for next week. Listen, you want to you come next week. Because there are some folks who are operating in one area of life when God called you to a different area of life. And the reason your pain is coming is because you crossed the boundary. Anyway, that, that's for next week. But watch this. When you and I understand our call to life, 
when you and I understand what did God say he was going to provide for me? Every decision that God has planned for your life, everything you do ought to be leading you toward where you are going. Listen, one time we, we were going down south, I mean, uh, uh, about four car lo 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 of us, and we got to the, the, this one place down south called the Loop. And Gina, in this loop, no one, well, the person who knew where we was going was in the car in the back. The person in the front had no clue how to get out the loop. We didn't have a cell phone back then, or we couldn't afford it. One or two. But we spent a half an hour going in circles. Because the one who knew where to go was in the back of the line. The one who was leading us didn't know where they were going. And we were all stuck because, watch this, the person in the front did not know where they were going. Watch this, in your life, if you are not sure where you are going, this is the way I encourage every born-again believer. If you are not sure what God has called you to, ask Him. Ask God, God, what's your plan for my life? God, Father, what's your will for my life? Am I operating right now in the place you have called me to? Because what this one of your frustrations could be, you are out of position. All right. All right. All right. And it is frustrating trying to do what God has not called you to do. I was telling uh, 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 a pastor friend of mine, his armor bearer, I said, man, you know what? You have the hardest position next to pastor. He said, pastor, why is that? I said, because folk don't like the fact that you are next to the pastor. All right, all right, all right. And folk gonna bombard you with stupid ideas. That's right. All right. Because they figure if anybody got pastors in, you do. But you gotta be smart enough to resist all that junk and tell them to say, no, if you want to tell a pastor, go through proper protocol. Right. Right. Do I ain't feeling it? Right. Right. Because everything is tied to a divine, what's this? Connection. Yes. Watch this. How many of you know, how many of y'all have ever gotten in trouble because someone came into your life that you knew should have been there? Yeah. Besides right. me. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. All of us have got tied up to somebody that we know was the wrong person for our lives and they took our lives in a whole different direction than the plan of God for our lives. And watch this. Many of you spend year after year after year after year going down the wrong road. Watch this. Because you're afraid of folk going to say about you. You're afraid of folk going to think. Watch this. When I understand my destiny is tied to my decision, then watch this family. Who cares what you think? I'm going to watch this. And so you must understand that Jesus is not going to just automatically, family, bring things to pass in our lives without our participation. Yeah. Right. Somebody say, you must, you must participate, participate in the process. In the process. Now come on, say, I must, I must participate, participate in the process. In the process. Listen, where there is no participation, there is a giving up of one's destiny. I'll say that again. Where there is no participation in the process, then you have given up your destiny. See y'all, watch this. The Holy Spirit's job is to work with you, not for you. I'll say that again. The Holy Spirit's job is to work with you, not for you. Okay. okay. How many of y'all ever had Holy Spirit give you a shout? I'll wait for you. How many of y'all ever had Holy Spirit feed you when you were hungry? I mean, he came and put a spoon in your plate, got a spoon full of food, and, and shove it down your throat. Watch this. If you want to go on a starvation diet, the Holy Spirit will let you. You can make a, you can decide I ain't going to bake for two months. Guess what? The Holy Spirit is not going to give you a shot. His job is to come along and work beside you, work with you to bring you into the place he had designed for you. Come on, class, say, he will work with me to do for me the very thing. 
things I cannot do on my own. Watch this, y'all. Look at the text. Look at the text. In this text here, I want, I want to show you where Joshua was challenged by God to fulfill destiny, but placed the decision to pursue in his hand. God gave Joshua a destiny, but he placed it in his hand. What the, in the text, the Bible said that Moses is now dead. Yeah. Yes. Write this down. The first thing Joshua had to do was redefine himself. Okay. Many of you are the way, the reason you are stuck right now is because you will not redefine yourself for this season. Right. Right. I'll say it again. The reason many of you are stuck is because you will not redefine yourself. You are defining your life by where you are presently. But listen, if you want better for your life, then redefine who you are. You cannot spend your time getting frustrated over what you used to be able to do. You understand what can I do now and this is who I am now. Listen, uh, yesterday, I'm sorry, it was the 4th of July, I was up there on my roof because my neighbor's tree shatter and blew on my roof and put a big hole in my roof. Now, Brother Rice, I've been doing roofs for years. But it's been quite a few years since I've been up on one. I know what you mean. <laughs> now, you know, I had to be the big bad, the big bad daddy, you know, uh, Brother Sam. I told Larry a whole other boy. I pushed up as far as I could to get as close to the roof as I could. I jumped my happy self up on the roof and I realized I should not be up here. Now you know like I know, I told myself, Eddie, you don't look down. I have never focused on a roof so hard in my life. Because I understood that if I see where I am now and look down, I'll freak out. Because watch this. I hadn't redefined myself that I'm too old to be going up on roofs. Because it wasn't that I could not do it or didn't know how to do it, but why not pay somebody who's half my senior, let them go up there. Come on, somebody. Now, don't get it twisted. I did get the job done. But see, someone else who was younger than me Knew the same thing that I knew, could have done it like this with less effort. All right. All right. All right. Joshua now has to redefine himself. Yes, Watch this now, because at first he was a follower. Uh -huh. Now God has called him to be a leader. All right. All right. It was not that Moses could not lead them, but Moses' time had ran out. All right. All right. All right. Now God is repositioning. Joshua's assignment, but Joshua is stuck on Moses. Yeah. Watch this. There's some things in your life that God is trying to kill, but you are still focused on the area where God has moved from. Y'all miss that. See, watch this, because when God is moving your life, the transition is not easy. Because many of us want to stay stuck where we are. Watch this. One of the reasons folk are stuck with the project mentality is because Big Mama was there. Her mother was there. And so on and so on. Listen, that was not the, the mindset of Congressman, Congressman Metcalf. When he had the projects built, it was to give black people some place to go live to be in the inner city of Chicago. But we turned it into a prison. And what happened was we got stuck in a prison and started killing each other. And it was not, watch this, it was not the design of Metcalf to turn this public housing into a prison camp. Or dope houses. And it was our decision as a people that messed up that place. And that's all I'm saying. It was because of our decisions. And so watch this, Joshua now has to redefine himself. God said, boy, Moses is dead. Mm -hmm. right. That old system is dead. Uh -huh. Joshua, 
you got to understand, I am moving, I am, watch this, I am redirecting your career. Somebody say redirect. For many of you, God is moving your assignment from one place spiritually to another one. But because your ace boom coon is at this place, you are so concerned about being with them and about what they're going to say because God is moving you. Maybe the reason God can't move you is because you're afraid of what they're going to say when God shifts your life. First of all, if you really my friend, when God shifts me, you should be glad for me. Y'all ain't talking back to me. If you're really my friend, when God shifts me and turns my life up, you ought to be celebrating who God is in my life. And if you're smart, you hang on to my coat. Because when I go up, you'll go up with me. Heard somebody tell me, say, I don't want to go up by myself. But watch this. This boy was on the backside of a mountain still crying his eyes out because Moses is dead. And God has two and a half million folk who is waiting for Joshua to make a decision. Watch this. What you don't understand is in the mind of God, God already knew that Moses was, was going to die. All right, all right. God already knew that Joshua was the right man for the right season to move this people to their next place of destiny. Yes. Question. Who's running your life? Who's causing you to make the decisions that you're making? Every popular decision is not necessarily the right one. I don't care how many folk make a specific decision. Watch this. Now, I'm not gay bashing. If you're gay, God bless you. But I don't care how many folks say that being a homosexual is cool. Your pastor. Oh, I should got a better amen than that. Ain't nothing but a big lip man I like. I promise you, nothing. They can change every law in the book. I promise you, I'm as straight as an arrow. Oh, y'all should have been right there. Because there's some guy in the pulpit there that's shaking up. Anyway, I, I, I don't know. What's this? Joshua had to redefine himself after there was something valuable he lost. Watch this, ladies. If a man leaves you, don't don't think you're a stuck because he left you. Your worth has not diminished because a man walked out your life. You spend your time crying, oh, what I'm going to do? Oh, Frank left me. I don't care. Frank can move 10,000 miles away. Baby, bye. Come on. Because if you don't know your worth, watch this now. You will go in your life what how someone else has value you. When I value who I am, I don't really care, don't really care what you think about me. I know my worth. How somebody tell me say I'm valuable, I'm valuable, I'm valuable. Moses is dead, and now Joshua has to be willing to redefine himself. Redefine who God has said he is. Watch this. The next thing he had to do was refocus his attention. Come on, let's say, I must refocus my attention. Watch this. God told Joshua, he said, arise. That word arise would suggest to get up. Move forward with your life. Why are you going to be stuck? Somewhere where God is gone. Watch this. I always say this for the body of Christ. One of the reasons we are still living with 1945 uh, church theme is because we are afraid to move. The church refused to be, listen, to move up into the technology age because we are stuck in our old system. Why should the world be years and years in front of us and we are still stuck in an old system. Watch this. That old system worked for that season. When seasons change, everybody in the house should be willing to change. Somebody shout change. Watch this. 
this. Even listen, listen, all you men, ladies, and men, listen. The man you're with now is not the same man you married. Yeah, right there. Right. Right. Watch this. Needs change. What I watch this. What I needed at 20, I don't need at 53. Okay, I don't, some of the stuff, some of the stuff you can eat at 20. You shouldn't be eating now. You wonder what you what what you got back law? Come on, class, say change. change. Watch this. People don't like change because change, watch this, change placed them in the area of unfamiliarity. But how will you ever discover something different if you don't move to somewhere different? I was talking to a guy this morning. I said, listen, I don't mind entertaining the thought of starting a church someplace else in a whole different country. I'm sorry, city, I mean. I mean, country, Lord Jesus. All right. All right. All right. All right. Why not? That's fine. I was telling him, I said, listen, when Bishop Jakes, he preached the same way now as he did in Virginia. All right. All right. But he had 127 members. But when he moved, now he's at 43,000 members because he changed. Some of you all, God has placed an idea on the inside of you, but the reason the thing won't be birthed is because you won't change. Because the same pookie is still telling you it won't work. It can't happen. Did you ask God? If God is telling you to change, then don't be afraid of change. Why be stuck someplace that's going nowhere? This is you all be glad I'm your pastor. I challenge you to change. I'll challenge you to push yourself beyond where you are. How can you and I ever reach the next level in God if we are stuck in the old system? If all we do is come to church and jump and shout and fall out and take out a whole row of seats, but we never change in our thinking, you will go home, do the same old thing, do the same old folk, and nothing in our life change. Somebody say change. Joshua had to refocus his attention. He said, what does God said? Arise, verse number two, and go over this Jordan. All right, all right. Watch this. His destiny was between where he was and the Jordan God tore him across. Let me ask you this. What is standing between you and the destiny God has planned for your life? Many of you all are one decision from being in the right place. Many of you are one decision for walking right into the place God has ordained for your life. Many of you all are one, one decision away from the perfect destiny that God has called you to. But if you are stuck and concerned about what they're going to think, you will never have the wherewithal to move from this position. Watch this. One of the things I have learned that it is better to take two steps back and to reevaluate my prior decision. And then if God says move from there and go this way, I would rather move back and start over than to keep on going down the wrong path because I'm afraid of what someone else will think about my decision. Are you following me? And so watch this. Over Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, what does it say? If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Class, look at me. If I want to go up, I must hang with folks who are going up. Every now and then you ought to evaluate the folks you're hanging around. Every now and then you ought to do an evaluation to find out who what this, who is influencing my thinking. Because many times the people who are influencing your thinking, watch this, you mean tell me your life is so out of balance 
that nothing you say or do is on a, a, a level playing field, but you want to give me advice? You cannot be on your 13th marriage and tell me how marriage should work. I'm just saying. You can't give me tips on how to diet and you are 400 pounds overweight. Come on, family. You can't tell me how to fix my house, but your house is a torn down shack. You can't tell me how to fix a car, and you don't even have a car. I'm just saying. Come on. And many folks are getting advice from people, what this, from their lack of information. The Bible said people are destroyed for a. Who's feeding your thinker? Who influencing how you think? If you get advice from a fool, I'm just saying. Mr. Tory, if a fool give me advice and I take his advice, I'm going to be as big a fool as that fool is. Why you follow me? Because if your advice works for me, there ought to be some signs that it work for you. You ain't feeling me. And so watch this. The Bible says to set my affections on things carried above. My thought process should always be God-centered. Watch this, family. Asking God, God, what is your will for my life? When was the last time you asked God, God, what is your plan for me in this season? Listen, if you are one of the seasoned Christians, you know you can't run as fast as you used to. But how about asking God, God, what can I do to help make this part of my life the most productive? Because what's called many Christians burnout in, in their senior years is because your mind said you were in your 20s, your body said, I don't think so. What's happening? Anybody been there? Because watch this. One of the things we one of the things the body of Christ you all is guilty about. We hate to delegate. Wait a minute. Catch this, Rich Hick. We hate to delegate. Because we believe that if I don't do it, that someone else will get the credit if I don't do it. And we end up burnt out because we don't pass the buck to somebody else. I guarantee you, I don't care how many McDonald's you own. When folks say oh right now, they ain't talking about you. <laughs> right now, if I say McDonald's, you see two things, the artist and the clown. <laughs> Watch this. I, mean, I guarantee you, half the folks don't even know who, who opened up the first McDonald's. <laughs> Most folks think Ronald opened it up. Anyway, I, 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 I'm moving, I'm moving. <laughs> the first thing he had to do was redefine himself. The second thing he had to do was refocus his attention. The third thing he had to do was rehearse the promise over and over again. When God has given you a destination, you're the one responsible for rehearsing it over and over again in yourself. Pastor, why is that? Because what this when I know where I'm going, I prepare myself to get there before I'm there. Yes, yes, yes. What's this? If you're one of the people who just take you forever to get dressed, I guarantee you, if you will think about what you've been there before. Auntie, I knew last night that I'll win the day. I thought it out. I saw myself with this on, down to my cufflink and my socks. I knew. I knew how I was going to look before I came to church. And so, this morning, I, I was ready in my 
in our mouth my folk, my body got, got dressed. The re could it be the reason God can't move you to the next place? It's because your mind is not there yet. You want to say, me and God's folk will not allow their mind to consider what would life be at this level. Are you aware that it is possible to love poverty? Yeah, it is. It is possible to love poverty. Some folk love being broke. Pastor, why? Because the money they spend is not theirs. And whenever I get it, I didn't work for it, I didn't earn it. And what's this? They love being dependent on, on someone else's system to make it work. What's this? Well, y'all watching on my dream. It was never God's plan to have the government take care of you. Can I tell y'all what the Bible says? It was God's plan that when folk didn't have enough, it was the plan of God for the church to take care of the poor folk. You know how come? Because those who had plenty was bringing to God's house. So then what this? There was no big eye and little youth in God's house. If those who had more than enough brought there to the church, then we could all be on the same playing field. Come on. But watch this. This boy had to rehearse. God told him in verse 2b, he says, go to a land that I have given you. Now watch this. Here is what Joshua had to rehearse. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. The land is mine now. The land is mine now. You don't get it in a minute. The healing is mine now. The deliverance I need is mine now. The house that I want is mine now. The car that I need to get around is mine now. If you lonely and need a man, the man you need is yours now. If you are another need me, you are a good wife, the woman you need is yours now. If you need peace in your mind, peace is available for you now. I said somebody shout now. Joshua had to reverse it. Because watch this. He would run up against opposition that would make him believe it's not his. In your life, whenever God makes you a promise, the enemy is going to make sure that things pop up in your life that will suggest that God might have made a mistake. Come on, y'all. Maybe it's just me. Has anybody got a promise from God and you knew what God has told you in your spirit? But it looked like everything in your life was contradicting what God had promised you. But I came to tell somebody, I don't care what the devil is bringing up in your life. Everything in your life that looks contradictory to what the word of God has promised you. I will give you five words you can live on the rest of your life. The next time something hits your life, you say them five words, the devil is a liar. When the devil tells you that you can't be healed, the devil is a liar. When the devil tells you you can't have victory, the devil is a liar. When the devil tells you you don't die broke, the devil is a liar. When the devil tells you, you will never be happy in your life, the devil is a liar. When the devil tells you, you will never have victory.